Witches, I'm back with the 31 Days of Tarot Challenge. Um, so I'm answering questions 10 through 16, I think, um, today. So the first question was, what was um, what was your biggest sort of tarot moment of 2016? And I can't really say that I had one. Um, I think, you know, I read for a lot of people. Uh, you know, I did a lot of readings for myself that were quite helpful. And um, one thing that was kind of cool is this year I was on a show called Canada's Worst Driver. And before I met any of the other contestants, I did a reading about who are the other people and how they would do. And so when I met the people, I kind of matched up like who was what person. And then I uh, predicted who would be the worst driver uh, before I met people. So that was kind of like a cool thing, but not, I don't know if that's really like important, but um, it was interesting to do. And it was kind of a neat exercise because I hadn't met any of the other people or knew anything about them. And it was kind of like a cool little thing to do. Like, can I accurately predict who's, you know, what the issues sort of are with each person and also, you know, what's going to happen kind of thing. So that was kind of cool. Um, the other, uh, question, the next question was, um, what, uh, oh, I'm losing. Oh, what are your tarot goals for 2017? So my goals are just to continue working. I have some new decks this year and working with them, getting to know them. And also just, you know, reading for people, um, continuing to read for people in person and online. And so just continuing to grow. So there aren't any really specific goals other than just continuing to grow things and to learn and to keep having experiences. Um, the next question is what tarot decks were, are you working with this year? So I'm working with some old standbys like the Shadowscapes Tarot, which I always work with. Uh, but this year, just some of the new decks I'll be working with um, are the first one is the Llewellyn Tarot. Um, this one's been on my list for a while. I recently purchased it and this will probably be a spring deck that I'm going to be working with. Um, it's not like a brand new deck. It's been out for a while, but um, I quite like the artwork. And then I found out that she also did the Arthurian Legends Tarot, which I also have, which I really love. So it's kind of no wonder I was attracted to the artwork here. So that's one of them. Another one I'm going to be working with is the Dreams of Gaia Tarot. Um, this is one of my favorites from 2016, and I'm going to continue working with it in 2017. It's a bit of a different system. It's uh, a little bit different than, you know, the regular sort of standard Rider Waite Smith type of decks, but it's quite deep. I, I really like it. The artwork is beautiful. Love working with this deck. And then another one that I picked up last year um, that I'm looking to work with this year is the Animal Totem Tarot. This is a Llewellyn deck. It is, um, I have the Animal, it's the Wisdom of the Animals Tarot, and I love that. This one, I feel like, is a little bit darker or a little more pagany than the other one. The other one's quite light. Um, so I'm interested to see how this compares to the other one, but I really do love animal type theme things, so I'm working with this this year. I've also ordered um, the Good Tarot by um, Colette Baron reed which I'm kind of curious about seeing. And I've also ordered the Everyday Witch Tarot to work with. And then I'm um, considering ordering the Star Tarot, but I'm kind of gonna wait to see what other people think of it. Um, and then for Oracle Cards, which is the next question, which Oracle Cards um, are you working with this year? Again, there's a few of them, but this year um, I'm gonna be working with the Keepers of the Light Oracle Cards. Um, which I, I got last year and I really love these. They're just like a really lovely hug. Um, I love the angelic energy. It's a wonderful deck. I'm also going to be working a bit with the Wisdom of the Hidden Realms Tarot. I was going to use this as a daily draw tarot and it just something about it said no, but I think it would work well with in accompaniment with some other tarot cards. So I'm going to be working with this. And then I'm also going to be working with um, the Gospel of Radia. This is going to be later in the winter, sort of early spring, late winter. It's going to be a deck that I'm going to be working with. Um, I worked with it just a little bit last year when I got it, but I'm really looking forward to getting in depth with it. And then another one is the Mystical Wisdom card deck. This is... Um, Josephine Wall is the artist. She's one of my favorite artists. I quite like this deck. Um, again, I haven't worked with it a ton. I got it last year, but I'm looking to work with this in the spring this coming year. So that's just some of the Oracle decks I'm looking at working with. The next question was um, the court cards, a little court card game. So who would be your friend? Who would you date? Who would you marry? And who would be your enemy? So friend-wise, I picked the Queen of Pentacles. 
This is the Revelations Tarot, by the way. Um, so I picked the Queen of Pentacles because I think that, first of all, um, a lot of my friends are kind of very Queen of Pentacles-y. They're ladies who are, you know, very good at what they do business-wise, but also really good at taking care of, like, the families and their friends and stuff, so very earthy. Um, I'm not a terribly earthy person, so it's interesting that some of my friends are more earthy. And a lot of my friends are, you know, in things like nursing and more earthy or more nurturing type fields than I would say I am. So, uh, you know, even though, well, I would say tarot, reading tarot and stuff is pretty nurturing, but they're more like a physical nurturing. And so um, I would say that Queen of Pentacles is definitely uh, the person that would be my friend. As for dating, um, in the past I've dated um, a fair number of King of Cups. I've also, or King, not King of Cups, but Knight of Cups. Um, you know, people that are very creative, definitely dated, I've dated in the past a lot of musicians and artists and uh, people that are creative types. Um, the Knight of Pentacles is very romantic, but they're also a bit of a dreamer. And I have dated as well Knights of Wands, people that are very like action-oriented and uh, adventurous and stuff. So um, the thing is with Knights though, they're not very sustainable for a long time. Um, definitely, you know, nice for romance and stuff, but not, um, not super sustainable. And then for marriage, I picked the Queen, the King of Cups. So King of Cups, I would definitely say describes my partner. He's somebody who is very, um, very good listener. Somebody who is definitely in touch with, you know, their emotions. And um, but they are much more detached. They're not like emotional all over the place or anything. They're more detached and they can sit back and they're a good counselor and a good listener and they take into account people's feelings is what I mean. So uh, definitely um, a king of cups is somebody to marry. Also too, they have a creative side and an intuitive side too. So I would say king of cups. As for mortal enemy, I would say the page of swords reversed. To me, the Page of Swords reversed is someone who causes trouble for the sake of trouble. They're the person that likes to gossip and whisper and stab people in the back, and also people who just get into trouble and get in their over their head all the time. Um, people that are kind of manipulative. That's one thing I can't stand is manipulative people, uh, people that are liars. So um, that is somebody I would say is my mortal enemy for sure. So that's like a cool little court card name. The next question was, do you think that the court cards are relevant? I think that on the surface, they may not seem relevant because t titles like King, Queen, Knight, Page seem very archaic. Uh, the tarot comes from medieval times, so it represents a medieval court system, but they're archetypes. So I think that they're still quite relevant. I also look at the court cards as representing uh, certain types of personalities, so not necessarily male or female, although they might tend to lean more that way. Um, so the King of Cups is all, they're also, pardon me, they also represent astrological signs. So, um, you know, for example, the King of Cups can represent somebody who in the sign of Cancer, um, not necessarily a man, although often it does represent a man, but not always. So to me, they are a lot more in depth and they're just titles and archetypes and they still play out in our lives. Just, you know, we don't live in a medieval hierarchical society anymore. Um, but I do think that they are relevant. It's just like they may not seem on the surface, but under Underneath they are and I've seen lots of decks where you know they switch things around where some of the pages are female or male and some of the knights are male and female and I've seen people switch that around and play with that because it's more about the archetypal energy it's not so much about whether they're male or female at least in my mind um, current tarot crush is the next question um, I think right now I would say Dreams of Gaia is kind of my tarot crush right now. Um, I really love that deck and it's going to be my February deck so I'm quite looking forward to it. But you know I have always loved Shadowscapes. Shadowscapes is kind of like my working deck and I, I love that deck so I would have to put them in that category as well. So I, um, I'm going to stop here with the, with the questions. I think that I'm up to 16 maybe. Um, and I'll continue on in the next video with the other questions to get all cut up. But uh, thank you for watching. Let me know, are, do you like any of the decks that I've talked about? Do you not like them? What do you think of the core cards? Do you think they're relevant? Do you think we should change names? What do you think? Let me know. Like and subscribe. I'll talk to you next time.